بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Yesterday we heard the story of Sheath عليه الصلاة والسلام This evening I'd like to move to the story of Idris عليه الصلاة والسلام Known as Enoch May peace be upon him in the English language where exactly does he fit in? The majority of the historians say that he was one of the great grandchildren of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, meaning from the progeny, the seventh generation of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. However, there are some historians who make mention of the fact that he may be from amongst the children of Jacob and from amongst Banu Israel, meaning the grandchildren, the progeny of Jacob and the people of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. However, we will stick to this opinion as the majority of the scholars have made mention of it. So when Adam alayhi salatu was 840 years old, this is when he was born. One might ask, where do we get all these details from? It's very interesting. We need to know it. We should know that Islamic history is divided into two categories. That which is from the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to now, and what happened after the Prophet ﷺ and at his time and all the way to now, that we are not allowed to take from Ahlul Kitab or the people of the book. We're not allowed to take it at all. In fact, we have to take it bil isnad, which means every story that is narrated to us, we need to know who brought the story, where it came from, what is the chain of narrators, from the person speaking right to the source of the story. If there is a single individual in that chain that is shady, that is dodgy to use that word, that is known as a liar, that is lying because he says I've heard from someone and that person passed away before this one was even born. Then we know that they are lying. If that is the case, we reject that. Even if it is Islamic history, we don't want that story. But when it comes to the history before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have explained in the first session here, that there is something known as Israeliyat. Israeliyat are the narrations of the people of the book. What the Torah holds, what the Bible, the Old Testament holds, and the stories that have been brought from those people. And they, these are divided into three categories. It's important that we repeat these three categories. Those that Islam or the Sharia came and rejected them. Those narrations, we reject them. For example, some came with the story of the Prophet Lot and Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, and they mentioned that he was a sinful man. We reject it because in Islam we believe that is not true. He was a pure individual, the best of his time. So we reject that. And we reject anything that Islam has rejected, even though it may, we may have heard it from others. Then we have those narrations that have come that Islam has confirmed. We find them within the Quran. I give you an example. The fact that Eve, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace be upon her, Hawa alayha salatu wasalam, was created from Adam. We hear that in the Quran, in two places in the Quran. Allah makes mention of it in Surah Al-A'raf as well as in Surah Al-Nisa. So what the Sharia has confirmed, we take it through because Islam has confirmed it. And there is the third category, which is the bulk of it. Islam has not spoken about it, neither confirming nor rejecting. With that, we do exactly the same. We will hear it, we will understand it, we will draw a lesson from it, but we neither, we do not need it to be Muslims. But if we can use that in order to understand, then be it. At the same time, we neither accept nor reject. So we do not reject it. But we say, after we mention the story, we say, Wallahu a'lam, Allah knows best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So, Sheath alayhi salatu wasalam is not mentioned in the Quran. We spoke about Israeli riwayat that Islam has neither rejected nor confirmed. The same applies Idris alayhi salatu wasalam. They say he was born when Adam alayhi salam was 840 years old. That we got from the Israeli riwayat. And then they say that he was a man who was tall, he was very good looking, he was very calm, he had a full grown beard. Subhanallah. And he spoke very, very clearly. When he spoke, he was calm. When he walked, he lowered his gaze and looked on the ground. And he was a very collected individual, calm and collected. 
and he used to ponder and reflect and he used to advise with so much goodness that was Idris alayhi salatu wasalam. So what does the Quran make mention of this Prophet? There are only two verses that we find in the Quran regarding the Prophet Idris alayhi salatu wasalam. Firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about him in Surah Maryam. And make mention in the book of the Prophet Idris. Indeed, he was very truthful and he was a prophet. So this now we know confirmed. He was truthful and he was a prophet. The quality of truthfulness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, we raised him a very, very high status. We raised him to a very high level. This is what the Quran says in Surah Maryam. So if you look at the Mufassireen, they make mention of the meaning of a high level. If I were to ask you, someone is raised on a high level, what would you say? You would say that spiritually they are elevated. So the same with Idris alayhi salatu wasalam. He was elevated to a very high level by Allah in that he was granted nubuwa and he was praised by Allah and he is mentioned in the Quran that is a high level. In fact, in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa Ismail wa Idris wa dhal kifl. Three names together. Ismail, Idris and dhal kifl. May Allah's peace be upon them. Kullum min as all three of them were very patient. So this is another quality of Idris. He was very patient. And Allah says, and we have granted them from our mercy. We have made them enter into our mercy. We have, we have put them within our mercy. So that is another quality. Allah has had mercy on them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullum min salihin They were all pious people, good people. Salih means a pious person. So these are the qualities of Idris alayhi salatu wasalam we know. And this is definitely a very high status. However, we have a very interesting Israeli riwayah, a narration of the people of the book, which we say, Wallahu a'lam, Allah knows best. But it's interesting to mention it because most books of tafsir have made mention of this beautiful incident. They say Idris alayhi salam, he was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Idris, from those who have followed you, anyone who does good deeds, at the end of the day, you will have all those good deeds doubled for yourself. Now that is something amazing. This is a status. Imagine others do good deeds and you getting the reward of it doubled. So he was very happy. And he knew that his death was approaching. So he had a friend from the angels and he spoke to this friend. He says, you know, Allah has promised me this reward and I'd like to amass a lot of reward before I go. So why don't we speak to the angel of death? Let's see what he has to say to say, look, just try and see if you can seek permission to prolong a little bit. So the angel says, look, that is a matter that is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, there's no harm in trying. Come. You ride on my wing and let's go. Subhanallah. So he rode on the wing and he was taken up to the heavens. He crossed the first heaven. He crossed the second heaven. He crossed the third heaven. When he got to the fourth heaven, Allah had instructed the angel of death to take the soul of Idris alayhi salam on the fourth heaven. And the angel of death was following the instruction of Allah but obviously did not know what was about to happen. When he got to the fourth heaven, he seen Idris there. Amazing. When he seen Idris there, the question was posed that look, I would like to extend and so on. He says, look, Allah has already instructed me to take your ruh away. Is it okay? He says, well, if that's the case, it's fine. So it is narrated. Wallahu a'lam, Allah knows best that his ruh was taken away whilst he was still in the fourth heaven. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa confirms in Sahih al-Bukhari in an authentic narration that when he went up for Mi'raj, he met Idris alayhi salam in the fourth heaven. 
So that is a confirmed narration that we know it's actually hair raising as we say it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. That is as much as we know about the life of Idris alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is why some of the Mufassirin say when Allah says he raised him to a high level, he is speaking of literally Allah took him up physically to the top and then his soul was taken there. Experience the beauty of Islam and bring happiness into your life with our app One Islam TV. You will have access to a wide variety of interesting documentaries, inspiring lectures, and so much more. Download One Islam TV from the Apple or Google Play Store today. Mm -hmm.